And um, <coughs> so what I'm going to do today is, is really give a very broad overview of this project. I'll dip a little bit into some of the different science areas. Um, hopefully, and what we're planning for this is that this will be a, a series of seminars that will be given by various members of the team with a focus on, on different areas, whether it's geophysics or modeling or others. And so what I'd like to do with, with this seminar is try to lay the groundwork, give you an overview of what the project is, what our goals are for the project, and also to set the stage, hopefully, for a bunch of follow-on um, seminars. What I'm hoping, and our plan for that is to advertise this as a seminar series, um, but have these seminars appear in regular, and other regular seminar series. So we're not creating a whole new one. We're basically going to have folks give talks in other seminars and then um, label them EQI. So um, let me just start with, with what our vision and mission is for this project. So this is a $20 million award from the uh, National Science Foundation EPSCOR program. And the goals of EPSCOR, uh, for those of you who have been involved, know that it's one of the few programs at NSF that really focuses on research, education, and workforce development, very much focused on an identified state need. So there are, I think, now 28 or I can't remember how many EPSCOR states f score states are those states that tend to receive a little bit less funding than some of our other <coughs> some of our other colleagues in some other areas. And the, um, of the number of states that are eligible to apply for f score, in the last go round there were ten, I believe, ten um, proposals submitted and three selected. So we were we were one of the few groups that actually got to go ahead to do our project. What's unique about EPSCOR is that, is that the work really needs to be focused on something that will have a long-lasting impact on the state, hopefully build capacity in a new research area, and also um, <coughs> contribute to education as well as workforce development. So it's a very broad program. It's a five-year program with an option. Um, typically, states renew their, their EPSCOR, not renew, they recompete for EPSCOR every five years. Um, they often choose a different science topic, but we may have the opportunity to stick with this one for, for another go around. So that's what we're thinking of. So really the overarching vision of our project is <clears throat> really focused on water resource management in Hawaii and trying to explore areas to make that sustainable, responsible, and I think most importantly, data-driven. So <clears throat> this is a very, as many of you who are much more familiar with this area than I am, understand this is a critically important um, topic for the state, also with lots of other folks who are very interested in the outcome of understanding water sustainability, uh, not only on this island, but, but all of the islands in the chain. So our mission with this project is really to, the work of this is really to ensure Hawaii's water future security through a fully integrated program, which I'll talk about today, of research, groundbreaking research, education, community engagement, and then ultimately decision support. And I'll talk about, um, hey there, how are you? I'll talk about some of the ways in which we're gonna address those, those issues. One of the things we're doing as a team, this is a, this is a very large team of individuals working together. Also, we need to be very closely connected to our stakeholders and our community members. So we've set aside some, what we're calling our core values for this project. These large um, multidisciplinary integrated projects can be a challenge to manage, and so as a group, we've really adopted a set of, of core values as we move forward in our project, and those are listed there. So really, our relationships with each other are important and with our stakeholders. We're really focused on rigor and excellence in our, in our research, and also that we kind of stick to our purpose and the processes that we put in place for doing the work, and also that this work is very closely tied to the place, the places that we're working in. Um, we've adopted a slightly different research process from those that I'm familiar with for this project. And that is that this, this, <coughs> this research project, education, outreach, and all the rest of the decision support we're doing really needs to be driven by stakeholder input. Because we're coming into um, we're coming into an area of research that's 
actively underway by members of folks at UH, by our agency stakeholders and others. And so our work is really driven by stakeholder needs. What are the most important questions that we should be asking in this area? So the way in which we're going to approach that, and I'll talk about our stakeholder engagement um, process, is to listen to our stakeholders, figure out what the most important questions are to ask, and then go through a process of data gathering, um, data aggregation, a number of different, we'll collect a lot of new data and, and, um, and <clears throat> legacy data. We're going to do a bunch of different kinds of modeling, both groundwater modeling as well as economic modeling. <coughs> and ultimately, we would like to be able to create a body of knowledge and some infrastructure to help our to help the state make better decisions about, about water and that our work will help to inform those decisions. This is our team. I wanted to introduce the team. There's a bunch of folks that are here today that are part of our team. So you can see um, really the group of individuals that are, that are involved. This is a very multidisciplinary project. We have members of the leadership team. These are the folks that help make all the decisions about budgeting and the and the vision for the project. Many of us are also very closely involved in all the in the research as well. Those are listed on there. The research team has a combination of folks that are geologists and geophysicists, geochemists, microbiologists, um, engineers, as well as we have folks who are experts in, in cultural knowledge, modeling. You can go down the list. Kim Burnett's in there with economics, <clears throat> scientific visualization. And we're also building a large cyber infrastructure platform, which I'll talk about to support the work. Um, in terms of our education and workforce group, is led by Barb Bruno, who many of you know, Bob Palayo at, at um, UH Hilo, and Matt Platts. And I'll talk about the activities that are going to take place at Hilo in a little bit. Importantly, as part of this and as part of the workforce development, and our goals to contribute to the hydrology workforce as well as the data science workforce in, <coughs> in Hawaii is that we will be hiring new faculty. Three faculty at UH Manoa, four faculty at, at Hilo. And so I've listed them as part of the teams there. This is kind of the, this is the organiz organization chart. Helps you understand how the different areas are parsed out into our research area, community engagement, education workforce, and then also our decision support team. This is um, EBSCOR grants are cooperative agreements. That means there's a there is a lot of oversight from the National Science Foundation on this project. So we have input from uh, leadership at NSF. We have an, a set of external evaluators. We have an external advisory board that meets with us once a year, and <clears throat> those are the individuals that help shape our, our project and also give us feedback in terms of meeting our goals. So that's kind of an overview of, of the whole folks. Now, now, overriding this whole large enterprise is the Hawaii State Science and Technology Committee. This is a committee that's actually required by the EPSCOR project. It consists of industry leaders, government leaders, as well as UH um, administration. And their role is really to oversee um, science and technology research in the state, but also provide guidance to, to our project at a very high level. OK, so as I mentioned before, I think um, this project in particular is, is very dependent and will be successful only if we maintain really strong partnerships with many of our stakeholders and the community. The agency partners that we need to partner with and are partnering with, the uh, USGS, Department of Health, Bob Whittier is here, Commission on Water Resource Management, also Roy Hardy is here today, glad to see him, Honolulu Board of Water Supply and the Hawaii uh, County Department of Water Supply. These are the folks that are doing hydrology research and have been doing research in this area for many, many years. And so how do we, coming in here as a new group doing research and education, how can we contribute to these ongoing efforts? In addition, we have the opportunity to work with a number of community partners, the Hawaii Community Foundation. We met recently with OHA and the Department of Hawaiian Homelands, as well as other community groups. So what we're trying to do is a very broad kind of communication outreach 
project at this point to engage folks and understand where we can make where we can make add the most value to a lot of the ongoing efforts. I pulled this information from um, from the recent report that was done by the Hawaii Community Foundation, the Hawaii Freshwater Initiative. I imagine many of you are familiar with this. Um, <clears throat> In 2013, they assembled a, a blue ribbon panel to really look at sustainability and water security and sustainability in Hawaii. And the outcome of that report, if you haven't had a chance to read it, it's quite good, um, is a number of recommendations on how we can maintain water security through conservation, improving, impro improving recharge, and improving reuse. And <clears throat> Interestingly, as part of this, as part of this um, article, they also had a number of uh, graphics that came from, I believe, from Sea Worm, showing the, the aquifers that are currently under risk at this point. And these are, I believe, 2012 um, measurements of of those aquifers or those areas that you can see there in Oahu and then on, on the Big Island that where where the amount of pumping or the amount of water level is is beginning to exceed the sustainable yield levels. Now there's a number of uncertainty factors. Many of these we're not studying in our project, but will certainly impact the work that we do. Those um, reduced rainfall in the future, increased drought, land use changes. I believe Kim Burnett is going to use some of that in some of her economic modeling. And then also increased evapotranspiration. Those are all things that are going on in the state right now. Many, all of them impact the water availability. And so from our perspective, really our focus is on understanding how aquifers work and understanding more about the subsurface geology and water flow and how that could impact the availability of water. Um, <clears throat> go back for one second. So my point in showing this slide is just to let folks know that there's a lot of activity in this area and we want to be part of it and we want to join with our partners figure out how the work that we're going to do can actually move a number of these on a number of these issues forward. And so, so far we've been involved in a bunch of um, different consultations and outreach meetings with